Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Hero Motocrop Limited Q1 FY25 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. As a reminder, all participant line will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aniket Mathre from Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Sajid. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the post results conference call of Hero Motor Corp. At the outset, I would like to thank the management of Hero Motor Corp for giving, giving us an opportunity to host this call. I would now hand over the call to Umang Khurana, Head Investor Relations and Risk, to take the call forward. Over to you, Umang. Thank you, Aniket. Uh, good day, everyone. It's that time of the year when the rains lift the mood and the sentiment across the country. Welcome to our post results conference call. To discuss uh, the calls on the call today, we have our Chief Executive Officer, Niranjan Gupta, Vivek Anand, the Chief Financial Officer, Ranjeev Jeet Singh, Chief Business Officer, India Business Unit, and Swadesh Srivastav, Chief Business Officer, Emerging Mobility Business Unit. As usual, we'll begin with short opening comments, followed by question and answers. Let me hand it over to Niranjan. Niranjan. Thanks, Umang. Uh, hello and good morning. And uh, a very happy 78th Independence Day uh, in advance. Our results yesterday, which you saw, reflects an accelerated momentum in our journey to drive profitable growth. We saw 10,000 crores revenue being crossed for the first time, registering our highest ever profit after tax with 36% growth. We've seen a sharp sequential recovery in many of our segments, especially if I were to call out entry in the last three quarters and in 125 CC this quarter, while we continue to maintain a very formidable market share in the Deluxe 100 and 110 CC uh, through our mega brands like Splendor and Passion. Our strong cash flow our margin profile uh, which we see will allow us to double down on building brands, especially premium, as we move forward. The good, happy news is that Vida has also started scaling up, and our portfolio expansion will happen within this fiscal itself. Coming to global business, it registered both volume and market share growth on a year-on-year basis. Uh, Bangladesh is a bit of a setback, but we are focused there on keeping our employees safe in line with our philosophy of being a caring organization. The story of India is looking better than ever. The union budget is supportive of employment and economic growth and benefits, as we are very hopeful, will percolate down to auto sector as well. We have some exciting you know, uh, as well as premium segment, apart as other than the VDA range expansion. So the calendar moving forward till the end of the coming fiscal uh, looks really, really exciting. We'll continue to augment our retail experience. We actually crossed 500 Hero 2.0 stores and Premier stores crossed 40, which will cross 100 plus by end of this fiscal. All in all, uh, happy to report uh, a great set of results, both on top line and bottom line. We are gearing up for a big festive season. And with that, once again, uh, happy 78th Independence Day uh, in advance. And uh, let me now hand over uh, to Vivek Anand, uh, CFO, uh, for further amplifying the comments on financials. Uh, Vivek? Yeah, thank you, Niranjan. Good morning, and thank you all for joining the call. And wish you all a very happy 78th Independence Day in advance. I am pleased to report strong financial results for Hero Motor Corp for the period quarter one financial year 25. The company clocked its highest ever quarterly revenue of rupees 10,144 crores, growth of 16% year on year. EBITDA stood at 1,460 crores, growth of 21%, and highest ever PAT of 1,123 crores, growth of 36%. This PAT, normalized PAT growth of approximately 20%, adjusted for exceptional item. The ICE margins improved further to 16.4%. This improvement is driven by operating leverage, mix improvement, cost savings, and pricing. 
During the quarter, the impact of spends on EV business on our margins is 198 basis points, which is a negative contribution of 181 crores, and thereby taking the overall EBITDA margin down to 14.4%. Going forward, we'll consistently grow volumes, thereby improving operating leverage, aggressively grow our premium portfolio, continue to grow PAM business in double digits, intensify cost-saving initiatives across the value chain. While we do all this, we'll continue to invest behind new products and segments including EV and premium, going digital to enhance customer buying experience and new product developments. To sum up, we are optimistic about the growth prospects of two-wheeler industry and with faster recovery expected in rural segment, ramp up of 125cc portfolio and strong investment behind building power brands, we expect to grow ahead of industry. On that note, let's open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, Amar. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mamuksh Mandlesha from Anand Rati Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity, sir. Uh, uh, so, firstly, uh, you mentioned about the uh, rural market pickup. Uh, how are you seeing demand trends in, in both urban and rural markets for your volume, sir? And uh, is that uh, going ahead, the rurals can do better than urban markets also? Thanks uh, for the question, Rajiv Jit. Hi, this is Ranjeev Jit here. Happy Independence Day to all of you in advance. Uh, yes, indeed, we are seeing an uptick uh, in uh, rural. Uh, it's definitely a more balanced growth that we've seen overall of the 12% that we saw uh, led by uh, rural. Our brands are really strong. Our network is really strong. Uh, and I think the, cust uh, the cu customers really trust the hero uh, brand as well as the service and the entire portfolio that we have available there with the kind of uh, you know the economic uh, uh, movements that the government has made with the kind of rainfall that we are seeing even as we get into the festival season uh, we see a better outlook from rural so uh, the sentiment is stronger continues to be so and uh, we can see that uh, the progress is pretty strong and good uh, as we're going along uh, both across rural and urban. Of course, uh, it's a stronger uptick on rural. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, on the uh, uh, CNG vehicles we are seeing in the market, sir, now, how do you see uh, uh, this kind of uh, product potential in the market and any plans for us in the medium term, sir? So the market will uh, will continue to see alternative powertrain uh, technologies. As we already know, we have ICE, uh, which is there. Uh, there's EV, where industry is doubling down, and we are doubling down as well on that. Uh, we are working on flex fuels, uh, ethanol-based fuels uh, technology. Uh, in the long term, there are hybrid technologies also being worked on. Uh, plus, apart from that, of course, we're working on the improving fuel efficiency. Of our, because everything is around uh, making the operating cost or, or being more efficient and more greener uh, fuel that's around the entire powertrain technologies. So there are multiple powertrain technologies being worked on. Uh, you know, eventually, you know, in the end state, uh, it could be mixed of few powertrains that may that may work in the long, long, long term. Uh, so we continue to work. R and D continue to work and invest behind it, uh, behind different uh, technologies. Uh, as, I, as I spoke about, so not commenting specifically on a particular uh, powertrain technology. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, on, uh, on the this is to Swadesh, sir. Uh, on the EV outlook ahead, sir, and uh, uh, will the growth uh, be better ahead for the industry? And also want to understand how the cost of manufacturing for EVs are coming down. Uh, whether related to batteries, motors, controllers, and how much reduction benefit you are seeing uh, for, for the, in terms of cost side, sir? Hi, thanks. Thanks for the question. 
Uh, yeah, you know, the EV uh, two-wheeler market in India is uh, definitely uh, growing. Um, there was a dip in April because of the change to EMPS, but after that, recovery has been very promising. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, very clearly, it will end up being a 1 million plus uh, market, uh, we believe. Uh, and we, uh, with our products and our network, we are pretty uh, strongly placed to take benefit of the growth in the e-tooler industry. Uh, on the cost part, uh, yes, we are working very aggressively and, um, you know, uh, on, on the powertrain side to bring the cost down by technological improvements, by... Uh, localization, obviously, by bringing scale. And uh, you will see that benefit coming out uh, into our uh, further launches as well. As we spoke, uh, you'll see affordable products coming out later this year. And uh, they will be at the uh, you know uh, backdrop of these cost reductions. Got it, sir. Just lastly, on the Hali, sir. May I request you to rejoin the queue for your follow-up question? Sure, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants, please limit your question to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, I would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Gunjan from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for taking my questions. Um, two questions from my side. Firstly, on the uh, ASP and the gross margin performance for this quarter, uh, could you just help us understand what, you know, what drives this 3% Q on Q decline? Because um, I, from my understanding, there was also some pricing action taken during the quarter, right? So uh, what explains that Q on Q decline and how, and in the current commodity setup, the margins, gross margins have also come off um, uh, any any thoughts around that? So, Gunjan, what we monitor is the EBITDA margin, as we've always said, and our EBITDA margin is 14.4% uh, for the quarter compared to 14.3% uh, for just the previous quarter. And, of course, when you look at the quarter last year, poor, same quarter was 13.8%. So, the EBITDA margins have improved. And, obviously, as you heard Vivek uh, talking about it, uh, that the ICE margins within that have improved to 16.4%, and it's the, it's the additional incremental investments uh, behind EV of almost 200 basis point, uh, that takes it to 14.4. Even at that level, it is an improvement, both sequentially and uh, and and year on year, year on year basis. But anything to call out from a commodity or a mixed perspective, you know, particularly at gross margin level, like that's something that we should be aware of. I mean, of course, it's improvement quarter on quarter, but just that the gross margin performance seems a little inferior. So just trying to get a handle on, is there any change in outlook to commodities or mix that we should bear in mind? Uh, Gunjan, not really. The only thing I would uh, probably call out is, is the parts uh, mix. Uh, which in this quarter uh, has been low as compared to the previous quarters. So that has an impact uh, when you come to the gross margin weighted average, which is more a phasing and seasonality impact. And let me just ask uh, Vivek to uh, give out the numbers in terms of the spares revenue and growth and, and the percentage revenue. Yeah, yeah. Vivek, yeah. Back yeah. Over to you. Thanks, Nanjan. So a couple of points uh, from my side. So uh, let me start with commodity. Uh, I think commodity is likely to be range bound. Uh, during the quarter, we have seen the metal softening, oil price is steady. However, we've seen INR weakening, right? So quarter one in particular, we've seen a modest inflation of 340 per vehicle, which is which is almost insignificant, right? So that's one. On the revenue realization, I think uh, I think Niranjan talked about uh, on a on a quarter on quarter basis we've seen that the revenue coming uh, from the parts business is is lower right and therefore the contribution uh, during the quarter is 12.5% versus 14.5 for 14.7% uh, in quarter 4 that's largely because of phasing and phasing and seasonality impact okay got it and it is forward into the uh, into the next few quarters uh, this will get evened out, uh, Gunjan. Yeah. 
Okay, got it. That's pretty useful. Just the second question on the extreme 125. Uh, congratulations on the response there. Uh, uh, in terms of the ramp up, you know, clearly the feedback from the dealers has been there is still limited supply. So if we were to think about how, um, you know, how sh how could be the volume run rate of this, monthly run rate of this, and how do we see the production ramping up, you know, through the course of the year? Some color on the numbers uh, there and alongside you know while extreme 125 has uh, seen a good offtake the numbers on glamour and passion have still been very very range bound so you know is there anything to call out from you know on the ground feedback how should that you know both of these models pan out sure good Jen. let me just uh, request Ranjeev ji on the good story of the 125 cc and then mm -hmm. overall Kunjan, thanks for the question on the 125cc. Uh, uh, as Niranjan did mention in his opening remarks, the 125cc has seen the sharpest increase uh, from a 13% uh, market share in Q4 to 20% uh, in Q1. So it's been a very dramatic story of, of increase that's come across all three brands that we have. Glamour has increased uh, market share, so has Super Splendor. And of course, Extreme 125R has been able to bring in incremental customers into our dealerships. Uh, the demand is definitely there for Extreme 125R, not only in dealerships, but also in our networks. And so far, we have uh, been, you know, still filling in the pipeline on Extreme 125R. And as we increase our capacity, uh, we will be able to fulfill the demand and we get a lot of uh, customer queries that want to, uh, to ride this lovely, lovely bike uh, that, that's out there for them. Uh, happy also to say that uh, we were probably, the, you know, the only brand that gained market share in quarter one uh, in uh, the 125cc. So that went uh, really, really well. Uh, lots of uh, actions happening. Super Splendor, some of you, I think it would be unmistakable the campaign that's there, which is Thart uh, uh, K, which is the 69 kilometers per liter, uh, which has been running across the country and really resonating because that is a key buying factor. Mileage becomes a key buying factor. When you get that in such a comfortable and a fantastic uh, motorcycle and a brand like Super Splendor, then it makes a huge difference. And we're seeing that positivity there on Glamour a uh, lot of positive advocacy is coming back as we reintroduced uh, the Glamour Magnetic and, and Andhra Pradesh, Telangana East, where Glamour is strong. Uh, we're seeing a strong comeback and lots more actions are uh, coming in, including some new refresh uh, products that will also come in to further fortify our position in 125cc. So the, you know, some of you will fondly remember that uh, the kind of position that Hero has had in the past in 125cc, we are working on that relentlessly. The whole team is working on that, and our customers are rewarding us for that. And just to add on uh, your question on the capacity part of it, uh, the Extreme 125R, we are increasing capacity. Already it's, I think, gone up to almost around 25,000 per month. Uh, we are taking it up to almost 40,000 per month in the next couple of months itself. So the capacity is on the ramp up as uh, the product has received uh, excellent uh, response. All right. Thank you so much. I'll join back with you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chandramali Muthai from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi. Good morning, and thank you for taking my questions. Uh, my first question is just on you know, the good volume trajectory we've seen uh, in wholesales in 1Q. I think we were the only company to grow wholesales double digits um, in one Q quarter on quarter. I think the rest of the industry was more you know, sub three, sub 4% um, wholesale growth quarter on quarter. So just trying to understand heading into festive season, uh, where we are on channel inventory at this point, um, and then how we're thinking about managing that um, heading into the spike in industry demand seasonality. Yeah, uh, so we are, you know, as you would have seen uh, in my commentary as well, uh, and, and Ranjit ji talked about at the beginning of the call about the positive sentiment that we are seeing in rural um, of late, and that's getting reflected in more categories as well. Uh, so the signs are extremely positive about a strong festive, and we are gearing up for that. And uh, as we always do, our target is to pre-festive 
move towards a number which can allow us to do a growth year on year on festive and at the end of the festive season we always target to be within the four to six week range so we are managing our inventories accordingly in terms of moving up so there's no abnormality in the in the festive build up that we are doing and just related to that a follow up um, for the quarter how would you say our retails were versus our wholesales just in terms of growth and we can talk about our retail market share so ranjeev ji what has been our wahan or retail market share yeah the best way to measure this is really the on the wahan portal and uh, we had a sequential growth of 0.4% uh, in wahan uh, market share and as niranjan was saying the festival build up and also with the less number of marriage dates in q1 but therefore you know there's a lot of anticipation and pent up demand that does get built up and we are available across the country uh, when you look at tier 2 tier 3 uh, and also our channels sick over 6000 channels so there's a lot of excitement and i would say uh, optimism on the way uh, we will this festival will be and therefore getting the right model mix the right kind of uh, inventory and the brands that we have all of that coming in is is going to be a, is, is a task always q quarter 2 is the time then then we really start building out towards the festival and uh, then after the festival of course it comes back to you know business as usual in terms of the inventory and the stocks the rains have been good the marriage season uh, we saw the effect in q1 but we know there are going to be some more marriage dates coming even in november so there is definitely that outlook that guides us in terms of how we manage our stock movement uh, over there so while on I even i'm just uh, you know building on that uh, what rajesh ji was saying uh, so our, our dispatch market share moved up uh, sequentially from 30.2 to 30.3 while our wahan market shares have moved up from 30.7 to 31.1 so our retail market share remain ahead of our wholesale market shares card that's helpful and my second question is just related to um, how you're thinking about you know the product pipeline going forward i think we've had a strong uh, set of product launches in terms of number of products over the past 18 months we've had the charisma we've had the hali we've had the maverick and and the extreme 125 so just trying to think about you know the market share stats that you gave uh, post all of these launches and then going forward how we are planning to you know recover uh, some of our um, lost market share over the past few years with with potential new products just trying to understand how you're thinking about that yeah uh so uh, let me take segment by segment so when we look at uh, let's say the uh, uh, entry uh, and 100 and 110 cc uh, we've already seen last year the passion refresh that we did Uh, which has done very well which has resulted in maintaining our formidable market share in the deluxe 100 and 110 cc segment almost at 90% 125 cc we launched extreme 125 uh, which has been received well so now we have three strong brands uh, glamour which is getting revived back super splendor which is getting anchored on mileage and uh, then we have extreme 125 uh, which is appealing to the youth and 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 actually between the premium and and the 125 cc segment it's, it's like a premium model within the 125 cc segment and there our task is increasing capacity so i would say that a 125 cc segment portfolio now is pretty strong and the action there is to ramp up uh, and keep increasing the market shares uh, every quarter coming to premium uh, you're right uh, last year we've had a slew of launches uh, the uh, portfolio building will continue as i had said it earlier uh, so you will see uh, some action on the premium end within this fiscal uh, where we will have couple of more models coming in uh, within this fiscal um, and then the other thing uh, will be the action on the scooters and the scooter action will be big on both i side and ev side on i side uh, ranjeev has talked about uh, destiny full body change it's a full refresh new product it will be unveiled very soon uh, probably as soon as maybe next month itself and then it will be followed by uh, the models in zoom where we already have 110 cc it will be followed by 125 and 160 cc as well so big action on the scooters which will happen within this fiscal and then coming to ev where we have been talking about the range expansion uh, you will see portfolio expansion into mid and affordable segment within this fixed fiscal so i would say huge action on on both scooters ice and scooters ev 
as well as continuing to build the portfolio on on premium got it that's helpful thank you very much and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of ajox from sundaram mutual funds please go ahead hi sir thanks for the opportunity uh, sir uh, if i adjust uh, for this pairs also uh, sequential asp seems to be down despite vida and extreme picking up very strong um and extreme has a higher asp right relative to other 125 cc's so uh, what am i missing here sir you know i think what you should focus on is is essentially there is a mix impact there uh there would also be uh the impact uh, when you look at sequentially uh on as i said on the on the parts revenue on the various mix the best way to look at is how is our ebitda margins moving and our ebitda margins are moving um in terms of uh, sequentially and year on year both are up um and uh, ice margins are strongly up and that's allowing us to invest uh, behind uh, ev Uh, for any further details if there is more understanding uh, you need uh, you can actually chat with umang and take some more data and details sure 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 and sir the 190 bips impact uh, is this a one time impact during the quarter sir so we as we said we continue to invest behind ev okay but obviously when your volumes are lower your percentage impact seems higher and as uh-huh. ev volumes will continue to ramp up in quarter 2 quarter 3 and quarter 4 uh and as pradesh talked about our our material cost in ev uh with bomb restructuring coming down uh, then one would expect a, a lower pps impact on the ice margins as we have seen compared to the quarter 1 so that's the trajectory over the next 3 4 quarters uh one should expect to see a lower impact just purely guided by the overall volumes and uh, and the bomb cost coming down with a new range of products got it i'm assuming similar it would have been in oq also right sir uh, because we are investing uh, at that point in, as well yeah it was around 170 uh, yes. basis point it's like the amp this quarter uh, but as we move forward it will mm-hmm. start evening out i understood I understood very helpful sir uh, congrats and all the best thank, thank you, you. The next question is from the line of Amay Pirani from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Um I just wanted to check one thing, you know, um and while it's it's a, maybe it's still early days, um on a YOY basis, you know, adjusting for seasonality, uh, the market share on a industry level basis for you is still, you know, uh, coming a bit low and is still declining. So two part question A is that something that you uh, focus on or is it more segmental market share that you're concerned about and overall market share is not something that you're targeting uh, and b um, if you are looking at overall market share you know how should we think about and what could be the drivers of overall market share also probably you know starting to move up on a on a yy basis we we always look for i mean thanks for the question we we'll always look for the overall market share as well <laughs> Uh, but obviously the the route to deliver overall market share is through segments mm. and and that's why then you start focusing on each of these segments and how the recovery is um and and the drivers are very clear drivers are at the entry segment and dealers where we are very strong formidable market share uh, we are uh, our actions are focused on expanding the category itself you know how do we drive the growth in that category whether it's to finance penetration whether it's some affordable pricing some micro action so how do we drive the category expansion at the bottom end of the pyramid on 125 cc i have already outlined the actions are to recover market share we had a steep recovery which we have done uh, we'll continue to do that moving forward um and that will add substantially to the recovery of the market shares uh, even the first part which is expanding the category because one of the reasons for the overall two wheeler market share Uh, looking the way it looks is because of the segmental mix in the industry uh, yeah. where the entry segment was impacted uh, by the incomes at the bottom of pyramid and therefore the proportion of that segment uh, went down over the last 2 3 years and that's where we hold a uh, uh, strong market shares so as that segment gets expanded once through the rural uptake that we just spoke about 
and second through our action, automatically the mix impact of the market shares will start playing out. And the third bit is the premium portfolio building, uh, which is a medium term, which is where uh, we are very focused and very uh, determined to win in this segment, uh, which is where we continue to build with new launches. Our retail experience continue to get elevated. We've crossed 40 premium stores. We'll cross 100 uh, by end of March uh, within this fiscal. And there are actions on brand building. You already heard even Vivek and Ranjit is talking about where we'll double down on investment behind building these brands. Uh, so that will be the action on the premium, uh, where on the medium term we'll start gaining. Those are the actions on 125 PC segmental recovery and expansion of the category, which will play in the category mix. And of course, um, last but not the least and very important is the scooters, where our new launches will be coming up to re-energize uh, this segment for us. So that will be our path to increasing market shares. Uh, I mean, I hope that's clear. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so, so just one data point. Um, uh, what is the share of financing uh, in in the in the current quarter? With sixty percent. Sixty percent. Okay. Okay. And just one last thing, since you mentioned, you know, that you want to revive the entry category, there should we expect like new launches, or it will be more like refreshes and some other uh, actions that you would take to revive that. I mean, it will be more like refreshes and probably a little more innovative financing. Um, as you would have heard, I don't know whether I've talked about this, we have launched what is called Hero DG Finance, DG Fin, uh, mm -hmm. which is actually an aggregation platform for financing, uh, which is all uh, uh, automatic or internet based, uh, where our response time, our time to sanction rates, uh, are going up, the approval time is coming down very sharply. So as the adoption happens on DG Fin, what it will do, I mean, is to, is to make financing more accessible uh, mm. to wider set of people uh, who are right now probably not able to access it. And, uh, and most of our finances are on board on this. And this has huge potential because it will improve uh, the accessibility it will also improve the affordability because as it becomes all, all digital based, the entire cost of the chain actually comes down. And third, it will also uh, reduce, in a sense, those delinquencies that happens because we'll be relying more on the digital footprint of the customer. So actually there's a huge potential at the bottom end of the pyramid in terms of the uh, in terms of financing and eventually it could even lead to lower um, uh, interest rates on financing. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge initiative that we have taken on the DGFN. Obviously, as we ramp it up, the results will start showing. Thanks. Thanks for that. I'll come back in the queue. Yep. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants, please limit your question to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, I would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Kapil Singh from Nomura. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Uh, my question is on uh, Extreme 125R and Vida. What is the reach and how much will it get to? And we have started to see some um, ramp up in volumes of Vida. Um, so if you could elaborate, what are the actions that the company has taken um, that is helping this ramp up in volumes? Sure, Kapil, I'll request Ranjeev Ji to address 125 and then Swadesh, you can come in. Yeah, so uh, yeah. while I said that, uh, you know, most of the dealers have already uh, got Extreme 125, but only about 38-40% uh, of our networks so far have uh, received the Extreme 125, and obviously there's a lot of demand, uh, and still our customers are very eager uh, to get their Extreme 125 and start riding it and enjoying it. So there is a pipeline, there is a booking. Uh, I think the capacity expansion that we have really signed up on and uh, making happen will result in customer delight uh, as we go along. So this is very timely uh, because we believe uh, before the festival season, this will be a key point of uh, demand uh, for our, you know, this uh, in the 125 CC. And I think this uh, expansion is going to help uh, reach across the country. So that's on the extreme 125. I'll pass it on to uh, Sudesh now. Thanks, Kapil, <clears throat> for that question. 
um as you know for the last uh, few quarters we have been really uh, building out the foundation for vida vida being the new brand uh, for us entering into the ev category so across the board whether it was brand building whether it was expanding the network now we are present in 175 cities close to 300 dealers are working with us um obviously different formats we are present in hero 2.0 we have vida hubs which are dedicated dealership we are present in premia we have our two experience centers and building out the service network and all the training because we want to make sure that we cover each and every customer whenever they have any query or any uh, any trouble uh, i think the you are seeing the benefit of all the this building which we have done and yeah you know uh, the charging infrastructure now we have you know close to 2500 charging infra, uh, charging stations in collaboration with ether uh, and all of this is really showing uh, the benefits now as you see the numbers are going up and we are uh, very uh, positive that you'll see uh, the steady growth uh, through the through the months in this year and with the addition of new products uh, it'll just go up uh, more and more so you're just seeing the benefit of what all we have been doing last few quarters okay that's great to hear and how should we think about the evolution of vida or the ev business profitability from here on uh, because you've talked about cost reduction so by when can we see that benefit uh, can you give us an update on where are we in the pli journey and overall uh, sir if you could talk about the fact that you know if we go from let's say 5000 to let's say 10000 units uh, per month then uh, should we expect that the drag that we are getting from ev business that will start coming down yeah so as i said uh, you know we cross 5000 uh, in july and you will see that we will only be growing further and further uh, within this year uh, and ex portfolio expansion will in improve that further so both in the volume and market share you will definitely see uh, further growth coming in uh as i mentioned earlier also on the call we have very strong action happening on cost reduction um in the bomb cost in manufacturing uh, cost uh and all, and plus architectural changes which we are bringing improvements which we are bringing in our portfolio and uh, some total of all of that you will see uh, that we'll start moving a uh, closer and closer to uh, profitability so i would say that we have all the actions lined up uh, within our r&d with our supply chain base Uh, and uh, in our product and tech teams trying to bring architectural improvements all of this you'll see in the coming quarters we'll be able to share with you how we are uh, doing on profitability but i just want to give you the assurance that all these action are in place and they look very positive also just talking building about uh, kapil on the pli uh, our our new range of uh, of uh, products um, which are going to be launched as as i talked about uh we are expecting all of them to be pli compliant thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of abhinav ganeshan from sbi pension funds please go ahead so yeah thank you for taking my question um uh, yeah, and congrats on a decent set of numbers thank you to interrupt you sir may i request you to please use your handset yeah, is this better now Can you come near to the mic and speak please? Yeah, is it better now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, We yeah. Congratulations you. on a decent set of numbers. I had just uh, two questions. So, do you feel that uh, the uh, EV would become profitable uh, by the next six to eight quarters? That is first. And second is if you can give some trajectory on how how are we going to expand our export uh, presence? You know, we've been talking about it for the last. couple of years uh, seeing some steady progress so if you can give some glide path on the same and also if you can break out how much is bangladesh as a part of our exports thank you right thanks you blended three questions into one but that's fine uh, as far as ev is concerned look uh, while uh, we will not be able to give a guidance on when profitable uh, but clearly there is a path there is a path of uh, a as the volumes ramp up then the fixed cost gets absorbed Over a over over a larger bigger scale, so you get the operating leverage from that. And the second part is the entire cost uh, bomb cost architecture that uh, Swadesh talked about. And third, of course, is the PLI uh, compliance on the new. So I think with a combination of these three, it will move towards the path of profitability. But honestly speaking, right now, 
the focus on EV is building leadership and expanding the category and building up scale and volume. And therefore, I wouldn't call uh, the, invest, the, the 200 BIPs, 198 BIPs that we talked about as a drag, but more as an investment uh, to build a uh, scale uh, for future. As far as exports is concerned, uh, as you rightly said, there's been a steady progress, obviously not as much as we would have loved to. Um, and uh, quarter one, we have seen growth. Uh, year on year, we've also seen uh, market share increasing. Uh, we recently announced our entry into Southeast Asia through Philippines and Brazil. These are big markets as we start entering and launching into these markets. They'll also help uh, scaling up. And the other thing is, as Nigeria comes back, as you know, Nigeria is having its own uh, uh, trouble uh, in the currency and the economy as it comes back on track. Uh, that should help uh, ramping up our volumes. Our Columbia units, have start, have, that unit has started doing better um, in the last quarter, as we saw, and therefore we expect ramp up from there as well. Yes, Bangladesh is a setback, um, but right now the focus on Bangladesh is uh, is around uh, around people, uh, taking care of the people. But uh, overall, if you were to get a sense, uh, our GB revenue is 4% of the overall company, and Bangladesh is 13% is of the GB revenue. So overall, Bangladesh forms around uh, probably 0.3, 0.4%. Uh, of the of the overall revenues, but uh, the operations will be coming back. Uh, the new government has come into place. Uh, the plants have opened up, uh, so it's not something which is a medium or a long term stoppage. It's a short term disruption. Thank you, sir, for the answer. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mukesh Saraf from Eventus Park. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning and thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> My first question is around the uh, rural demand. Obviously, uh, you have uh, kind of uh, uh, mentioned that things are looking quite good there. Uh, just trying to understand, uh, uh, could you give a sense of uh, replacement versus, say, a new buyer within the rural market itself? Uh, uh, so that we can kind of understand how uh, you know this could kind of uh, continue going forward. Yeah, we continue to see uh, first-time buyers actually coming in quite well, uh, e even in uh, rural. I think, and that's not surprising. It's it's quite a uh, movement, and 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 you do get to see, uh, you know, like our brands, HF Deluxe and Splendor, getting the bulk mm -hmm. of the interest, and therefore the conversion uh, there just because of the brand equity, the trust, and the service network uh, that we have. Uh, so, so that is uh, playing out. But the other very interesting uh, phenomena that we've seen is that even the 125 CC uh, has mm -hmm. done well in uh, rural markets as well. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's it's definitely progressive in terms of what right. people are thinking, in terms of what personal mobility can bring for them. And uh, Hero continues to be top choice. Right. So the 125 CC demand, is that also, I mean, largely first-time buyers or, or there you're seeing more of a replacement? So it's it's just a couple of points probably lower than just the entry level, uh, but okay. it's still, uh, you know, very comparable in terms of first-time buyers when you look at, at the 125 sure. CC because like Naranjan was explaining, with finance options coming out and the ease of financing that's available uh, with DigiFin right. uh, that we have, uh, the customers, uh, you know, the, their ability to take those leaps are, are happening and they're looking at it a little bit more from the long term. I think there was a time uh, post COVID when and during COVID when there was a slowdown. We're seeing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, a little bit of an uptake out there. And yes, it is in uh, 125cc as well. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, <clears throat> secondly, on your 2.0 stores, uh, I don't know if I missed it. Uh, so last quarter you had mentioned 400 outlets. Uh, where do we stand now? And uh, and any kind of uh, early feedback that we're getting from those stores uh, in terms of customer perceptions, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the feedback from there. Sure. So the Hero 2.0 uh, stores that we've got, you know, these are really prime estate. You can imagine that they're in the auto hubs. Uh, and then when the makeover is done and you don't clutter the store so much, the entire ambience 
really changes and there's a sense of awe when the customer walks in. Uh, there's that feeling of space. There's a feeling of the brands being able to really, uh, you know, their value propositions come through. People are able, without crowding amongst each other, able to review them, see them, experience them, do the test tries, all of that. It makes a big difference in terms of numbers. Uh, we've already crossed over 520, uh, so we are we are over half of the number of dealers that are already uh, converted to Hero 2.0 and upgraded to Hero 2.0. We're seeing a wow. remarkable jump in terms of the happiness scores, in terms of customer satisfaction, the sales experience. In addition to that, we are also upgrading our service centers about 190 customer service centers have been upgraded and you will see a completely new customer lounge so when the customer is waiting out there for their uh, you know vehicle to be serviced uh, there's a very nice experience uh, that they will they will have uh, and also we've also expanded further to green dealerships so a lot of green elements have been put into place in our you know sustainability efforts so all of these together create a remarkable impression and a new perception of Hero, uh, and it's actually industry leading. So Hero 2.0 in that sense uh, brings in not only our people who think about Hero for the first time, but also there are new customers who are coming in just attracted by the newness and the freshness of the way the Hero experience is. So that's on the one side, and, and if you uh, would like, I can also expand a little bit more on Premia, because that's another very interesting uh, project that we've taken on. Uh, and we uh, very recently inaugurated the 42nd uh, Premia store, which is the first in Delhi. Uh, our executive chairman uh, did the inauguration. And it's a beautiful store, and just like that, across the country, uh, we've got these uh, stores which have the range of our premium vehicles, including Vida, Harley, Mavic, Charisma, X-Pulse, and Extreme. The ranging is done in a certain way. The way the ambiance is created is really reminiscing about the uh, mountain lifestyle and bringing them into a space where they love the power of biking. And the effect that it's having overall in the city sales on premium is also very positive. So I, I would say if any of you can visit some of these premia, and Umang will help you with you know where they are. It's also available on our website. But you, we would love you to actually go out there and visit and experience because these stores are getting like a you know 4.9 on an aggregate level uh, at the uh, on the Google uh, uh, My Business, and and also the Narayana store got a five, and the dealer was so proud to talk about that that you know, it got a five uh, rating there. So definitely would want you to see how we are shaping the change and the industry benchmarks as we go along. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dinesh Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, first question is on uh, PLI for Vida V1. Uh, can you clarify whether uh, we have applied for this and by when we will be getting uh, certification for that? So Janesh, uh, uh, PLI uh, is for, you know, we'll be replacing the current range with a new range of product that will be coming in. And okay. uh, for those, the PLI uh, process is on. And as I said, we are pretty confident that when we're launching those ranges, uh, which will start uh, from October onwards, uh, and uh, we will have the PLI compliance, October, November onwards. Got it, got it. And second question is on, uh, 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 realization versus uh, margin performance. So on one side, we have seen weaker mix due to lower spare sales and about 50 basis point impact of uh, commodity cost inflation. But our IC margins have gone up by about 110 basis point on QQ basis. Uh, how do we uh, bridge this uh, dichotomy of weaker mix, higher RM cost, but better IC margin performance? It's through the leap savings program that we continue to run. And uh, and that's what is helping us uh, to improve the margin. And of okay. course, the, the operating leverage. Okay, okay, got it, got it. And lastly, can you clarify what would be our capex uh, uh, and investment in R&D this year? Overall, R&D spend, we continue to be around, I think last year we spent around 2.2% of the, of the revenue. 
and uh, and and we've been uh, continuing on this uptrend on the R&D expenses. So you can assume that our investment behind R&D and investment behind brands uh, will continue to have the uptick as we build technology and build brands. Okay, and capex. Capex guidance is between thousand to twelve hundred crores per annum. Got it. Uh, great. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kumar Saket from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Thank you for taking my question. My first question was on the profitability of the EV business. So we talked about uh, operating leverage to be one of the key drivers for improving the profitability. Now, sequentially from fourth quarter to first quarter, the volume almost doubled in the EV uh, business, although we haven't seen material improvement in profitability. So possibly it may take much higher volume to drive profitability. So can you give some sense on at what level of volume we'll start seeing the operating leverage to start kicking in? And as part of that, is there any step function improvement as well in profitability through either new technology which you're working on, the platform? or the supply side, which we would see in the coming quarter. So it would be a gradual improvement in profitability. Uh, in, in terms of the operating leverage, obviously, while you're right in saying that the volumes have doubled, but, but they're not meaningful as yet. So for them to have a meaningful impact through the operating leverage, they need to reach a certain scale. Uh, while I don't have exact number, but at least they need to be twice of the current monthly run rate to have an impact on the, uh, on the operating leverage. Uh, the second part is on the cost structures. Yes, the bomb architecture being worked on. It will be a combination of both step and gradual. So you will see a step change the moment a, a new product line is launched, where they'll come with a different architecture and thereafter gradual movement from there on. As I already said, that we'll have the expanded uh, range of products uh, available within this fiscal, and they will be coming up with a step change in the architecture. And thereafter, the continuous improvement uh, will, will be there. Got it. And just a clarification on that side. So you had earlier spoken about that the expansion of portfolio and EV will be happening in the mid and affordable section where the pricing could be a little more challenging. So that will not have a profitability impact? So that's getting geared with the, with the cost structuring as well. So, uh, so we're not adopting that uh, getting into affordable uh, through price drop, uh, but we are getting into affordable through cost structuring. Got it. Thanks. Uh, my second question was on the EV market share. I understand market is really small today, so wouldn't make a lot of sense to look at the today's market share. But from medium term perspective, how would you see your EV market share eventually trending towards? Because your scooter market share has largely been in single digit, mid to high single digit sort of a number. And electrification, at least in the first stage, would be largely driven by scooters. So does that not create a bottleneck for you to expand your market share or how you are going to come around that? Not really, because if you see, first of all, you're right in, in, in saying that uh, the, uh, you know, when you look at the, uh, the current market size itself, it's not representative because it's like your early stage of the category uh, where the category is just 14, 15% of the scooters and only 5% of the overall two wheelers. So the game has just begun. The second thing is that the proxy of market share here vis-a-vis -vis the scooters, ice scooters, that doesn't hold true uh, because all the players who are holding the market share uh, in EV scooter as of now, uh, at least at the top end, all had zero market share in ice because they were not in ice at all. So this is disruption uh, which is happening in the scooter category. And actually our low market share in scooter ice benefits us here because when the category gets disrupted, uh, that's when uh, one has actually a better chance in terms of gaining share. So we have everything to gain here. The game has just begun. Yes, we are at 5%, but as Swadesh talked about, uh, we'll continue to ramp this up. Swadesh, you want to add anything on this? No, I think, uh, Niranjan, you covered that uh, the EV category is just building up. Uh, and it allows us to play, uh, uh, you know, a different game. And the, even the uh, customers who are getting into uh, EV buying uh, are looking at it uh, in a in a fresh way, right? And uh, in the industry, we have five percent market share. In certain cities, we are doing even better. But uh, we'll continue to build from here. Great. Thanks a lot, Neeranjan and Sudesh, for that. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Pramod Amte from Encred Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question to Niranjan. So if I have to look at your ICE margins, uh, which is at 16 odd percent, and look through the history of margin profile, you are almost near to the peak margins of around 16, 17 percent. So how do you look at market share versus margins at this juncture? And do you see that market share being under pressure? Is it worthwhile to deploy it uh, to uh, get better market share? We are absolutely right. We've always guided to 14, 16% and our ICE margins are at the top end of the guided range. Uh, so, and as Vivek also talked about from here onwards, uh, as you started, we'll be doubling down on the investments. And from here onwards, obviously, having the margin shape getting, have got which corrected, it, it is allowing us uh, to invest behind EV, as you saw. Uh, and of course, what it also means is that doubling down on investment on our growth priorities like premium or the new models that we are launching. Uh, so clearly moving forward, the growth in the market share becomes a number one priority, uh, given that the margins are pretty much in the range that we want it to be. And related to that also, considering the buoyancy in rural, do you see more product interventions will be a good way to look at to uh, get the maximum work out? Uh, I, I mean, Honestly, I feel that we have a, a pretty strong portfolio of the products and the variants. Uh, whether you look at entry or 110, 125 cc or premium, of course, we'll, we'll launch more and scooter, I've already talked about an EV. Uh, but I think in the rural, it's, it's more about the business model, it's more about the finance penetration, and of course, our R&D keeps working on, on, on really low cost models. So that is in the medium term. Uh, uh, looking at that, how low we can get there. Uh, but essentially, it's not so much about expanding the product portfolio there. It's about uh, reaching out uh, to the nooks and corners uh, through more affordable financing. I mean, they're looking at more down payments and affordable financing. That's the, that's the cash issue. And of course, as the economy moves up and there's a buoyancy that, that comes back, uh, that also helps in the, in the growth at, at that end. Sure. Thanks, in knowledge. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan from Novama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Just one question. Uh, can you share the EV revenue for the quarter? Yeah. So we've, we've sold uh, 10,000 plus units, and the revenue in terms of absolute is around 125 crores. I got it, sir. And uh, at the gross margin level, what might be the loss, sir? Uh, we measure only at the EBITDA level, which uh, Vivek has already spoken about, the 198 basis point. Yeah. So that's the best way, uh, because there will be investments across the line uh, into a and and the other costs. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And I talked about it, uh, at uh, EBITDA level, that translates to 181 crores. Yeah. Got it, sir. Thank you for that, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if there are no more questions, thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. Uh, I'll, we look forward to connecting in person. Have a good day and connect with you soon. Thank you. On behalf of Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now discuss.